For some time now, we have been in a series entitled Deliver Us From Ourselves and the Devil. God, you're in charge from Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 13th verse, coming from the Message Bible. And the reason why we're so on, the reason why we've been on this path, because dealing with people, talking to people over a period of time, you realize that people deal with a number of things in their own personal lives. And as they deal with those things in their lives, some people are more apt and prone to deal with them head on. Some of them are actually sitting in denial. Some refuse to deal with some of those things that are deep on the inside of their hearts that's causing them pain, misery, and strife, and a number of other things that go along with that. But the real issue is, is that God wishes for us to be free, completely free. The Bible says that Jesus has come to set the captive at liberty. And this is a day and a time where we all need to do some deep soul searching. We talk about this continuously with our ministry. We talk about this continuously through our broadcasts. We talk about this continuously through our Bible studies. And even the fact that if we would seek the Lord for what he would want for us, we would experience the joy of the Lord, the salvation of the Lord. We as a whole, as a church, as a community of believers would be far more effective as we walk with the Lord and as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. For too long, the world has made statements about the church that is full of hypocrisy. They don't want to be a part of it because they see so many wrongs and so many ills. They see internal warfares. They see us being hypocrites when it comes to our love. Our love isn't pure. We love those who are amongst our ranks and outside of the camp. We very much don't do so. We very rarely outreach the people in our community. Although we plan to go from door to door, we are sitting in fear because we are afraid to get out in the streets and witness for Jesus Christ because we don't want to re experience rejection. We don't want to experience those who will come up against us with harsh opposition. And we're living in a world where people are far more knowledgeable about spiritual things than they ever have before. They're aware of the things in church. You have people that don't go to church that's fully aware of the scripture and can quote you the scripture like the back of their hands. You have people that are involved in other religious practices. You have people that are involved in false religious practices. You have various denominations. You have the Muslim movement. You have those who are moving into Buddhism. You have those that are moving into a witchcraft. You have those that are moving in so many different things in which they could find comfort or seeking comfort in as far as their religious practice in seeking or serving or worshiping a higher power or higher authority. Now, some people may dispute me and want to dispute the facts, but there is only one Lord, one faith and one baptism and one father of us all, according to the scripture. And that is God, Jehovah. That is also his son, Jesus Christ, who died on, came to earth, died on Calvary, was resurrected on the third day, and is now seated at the right hand of the father. And the fact that he sent back the Holy Spirit, the comforter that he promised to the believers that would empower us to be delivered from ourselves from our fears, from our apprehensions, from our sins, from our negativity, from those things that divide us. All those things are comprised within the Godhead, the freedom that it should be experienced in the Lord. Now, I don't know of anybody who does not want to experience freedom or remain free or experience a greater level of freedom, but we know that that is the fact that even in church, that the vast the vast majority of people who still faithfully come and attend, they're looking for something that is beyond what they see in this present world and in this present day. They're looking for a comfort that is beyond anything that they've heard, anything that they know. They want to be so free that they can walk in freedom and liberty and in the joy of the Lord and experience all that the Lord has for them. So what does it mean, Lord, deliver me from myself? and from the devil. You're in charge. We pretty much have spelled it out over over series throughout the course of this, but we want to revisit it to get a, we want to revisit it again today because we still see that there are people struggling being set free. So, let's deal with the core of it. 
we know that we've gone through some traumatic experiences in life. Some of us have gone through rape. Some of us have gone through molestations. Some of us have gone through physical assaults. Some of us have been rejected. Some of us have gone through uh, relationships where a spouse has left us and rather harshly where they committed adultery on us. Some of us have been in relationships where we have committed adultery. Some of us have been in friendships where our friends have actually turned their backs on us or even betrayed us. We've gone through things where People have talked about us we, we, and, and drugged our names through the mud. We've gone through situations where uh, co-workers and the things of that nature have done things where taken ideas and taken advantage of us and, and pulled those things together as though it were their own and packaged it and received accolades and even promotions as a result of it. And some of us have felt slighted as a result of it. So now we're walking in anger, we're walking in bitterness, we're walking in fear, we're walking in distrust. And the Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, and with all of our mights. But yet at the same time, even when it comes to trusting God because of all of those life's events, we don't trust God the way that we should be trusting him. And the way that he wants us to trust them. We just made mention of the scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. That scripture really tells us where our trust should be. Our trust, commitment to trust the Lord is really liberating it's healing and it sets the course for the delivering works that he wished to do and perform in our lives. We cannot receive all that God has for us until we walk in all that he has for us. He said, yes, we've been hurt. Yes, we've gone through all those things. We won't run down the list again. And some of you can definitely add to the list rather successfully because the list that we mentioned is not all inclusive. But there are some things that you've experienced outside of the scope of what we've listed. And all those things, we have to be willing to ask the Lord to deliver us from those things. As painful as they are, as it is your right to be angry, the Bible said to be angry and sin not. It is your right to hold on to your anger. It is your right to hold on to your pain. It is your right to hold on to your disappointment. It's your right to hold on to your fears and your apprehensions. It's your right to hold on to the thought process that got you into this predicament in the first place. And it's rightful your right to think of those persons the way but that you do. Let me share this but with you. While you're maintaining all of those things and being warden over all of those things, your heart is still yet in pain. The power that Christ wished to extend into your life is impeded or held back because of the pain that you refuse to release and to let go. And when you learn to release the pain that is there, and when you trust God to take the pain away from you, and when you trust God that he will not hurt you, he will not wound you, he will not cause any further pain in your life other than to remove the pain that's already there, sometimes the removing process of that pain could be just as painful, if not more, because it means that you now have to deal with I it. Face the people that when God is beginning the deliverance process in your life, one of the things that he does is that he begins to bring those things back to your attention. He brings those things back to your attention. He does it in multiple ways. He does it by either dreams. He does it by either visions. He does it by a, a thought process that you cannot shake, that you cannot run from, you cannot hide from. You can even self-medicate. You can do whatever you want to do, but he'll deal with you in various ways, dreams, visions, his audible voice, and also the thought process that he puts in you that brings you to the point that you now relive the events, but as you're reliving the events, it's not meant to hurt you. It's not meant to destroy you. What is meant is for you to confront it, to deal with it face to face in the presence of the Lord and asking him to set you free from it. The whole purpose 
is that God does have your best interest in mind. We can only get things out of us and ask the Lord to deliver us from those things as those things are brought to our attention. Sometimes there are things that we suppress. There are things that we just put off. There's some thought processes that we hear continuously that we just don't want to deal with. And some of us have become comfortable dealing with the negativity of those thought processes on a continuous basis. Psychologically, that's a problem. That means that you're reliving the events every single time, but yet you're dealing with it from the standpoint of being a victim. God wants you to change the V word that you use. He doesn't want you to be a victim. He wants you to be the victor. He wants you to be a vic. He wants you not to be a victim, but to be victorious. He wants you to be an overcomer and not one who is defeated. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. The Bible said that we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, that he would actually save us. We only look at salvation, most of us, when it comes to the initial salvation process, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And then beyond that, we don't see that salvation is still pretty much a part of our lives. Salvation is working all the time. We are saved to be saved, to be saved eternally. We're saved from ourselves. We're saved from those things that have crippled us. We're saved from the devil. We're saved from the powers thereof. We're saved to walk in the power of Jesus Christ. There's only two different powers. There's the power of God and there's the power of darkness. And we have to make a decision. Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. I'm going to take it and revise it just a little bit. Choose ye this day how much longer you want to stay with your pain. How much longer do you want to stay with your agony? How much longer do you want to stay with your frustration? God can deliver you as quickly as you allow him to. God will deliver you as quickly as you will allow him into your space, into your mess, into the stuff that has plagued you. As soon as you allow him in, he will deliver you. But you have to make an informed choice. This is not just words that you speak out of your mouth. This is when your mind, your heart, and your mouth comes into agreement. The Bible said that there are three that bear witness in heaven. The three that stand in agreement, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the triune being of God, can come together to make informed decisions, correct decisions, and create the universe as we know it today, then why can't the triunity of man come together and also figure out what's best for it? God is best for you. Jesus is best for you. The Holy Spirit is best for you. And listen to this. God isn't willing that you deal and continue to live with the pain. The Bible speaks of a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. She had gone to various doctors and they have provided her with medicine and diagnosis and their prognosis, but yet they couldn't cure her. So one day she hears that Jesus is on his way. She sees the crowds that are thronging him. They're all around him. There's no way that she could get possibly close to him because they're just the tightness of the crowd and just their closeness to him. And as he moved, they move, but yet she couldn't get to to him. Not being discouraged, not being frustrated, she devised a plan that really could have gotten her killed. She decided that she's going to crawl to him so that she could get close enough to him to touch the hem of his garment. Now, just think about the multitude of people there and the fact that people don't usually look down when they're focused on something else. They probably felt her itching, inching her way through the crowd, but yet if they look down, no one pretty much stated that, look, watch out for this woman because you can trample this woman. No, undaunted by the crowd and undaunted by the fact that she could have eventually been trampled on. She pressed her way to touch the hem of Jesus's garment. And therefore, Jesus felt virtue leaving his body. 
And she was healed that self-same moment to the point he asked, who touched me? Because he knew that virtue had gone from, from his body. In desperation, the woman, after 12 young, long years of suffering, mentally, emotionally, and physically, made a decision that she's going to press her way, even though it would imperil her life to danger, she still would take the chance to seek Jesus out in a way that she had never heard before. Listen, how many of you are so desperate in this moment, so desperate in this time, that you really need a touch from the Lord. You need a touch from him in such a desperate way that even if it meant you or cost you everything, you will take the chance and the opportunity to go after the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind in a way that you have never heard before, in a way that you've never heard someone seek in the Lord before. But in your time of desperation, because that's where God wants you to be, in a mode of desperation to want to be set free. Say that again. In a mode of desperation where you really want to be set free. You no longer want to hold on to the pain. You want to be delivered from everything that has plagued you. You want to be delivered from you. You want to be delivered from people so that you can walk and experience the joy of the Lord 100%. That's the place where God truly wishes for you to be. And when we get to that place in him, then everything else around us becomes exactly what God wishes for us to achieve. True healing, true deliverance, true freedom. And listen to this. The Bible says this, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. When God sets you completely free, he floods your soul with joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. That joy is so, so bubbling, so enlightening, so thrilling, so motivating. This is spiritual adrenaline running through your spiritual veins and through your natural body and through your mind to the very point that it helps to keep you free from anything else that will further come. And it's so motivating and so liberating that you look at your life as a full picture and you find out what else is it that I need to be delivered from. Sometimes it's objects. Sometimes it's further thought processes. Sometimes it's further pain. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's an establishment. Sometimes it may even be the church that you're a part of that's not driving and motivating your growth and your development to the very point that you've outgrown it. And now in order to continue in your process, you have to move to the place where God is leading you to go to and becoming that which God would have you to become. No longer remaining stagnant, no longer frustrated, but walking in the liberty and being free in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And the Bible says this, and be no longer entangled with the yoke of bondage. He wants you to be free, so free that you're never coupled with that bondage again in your life. That bondage is no, now in the, that bondage is now under the blood of Jesus Christ. You've been set completely free from that bondage, and that yoke has been broken off of your neck and off your shoulders and off of your back. This is where Lucifer now power is trampled over. The Bible said that he will bruise the heel of the seed of the woman, but the seed of the woman will crush his head. This is where Jesus wants you to crush the devil and put him to an open shame. This is where you resist the devil in your spirit by being set free from all those things that were previously there. Now you have fortification. Now you're built up. Now you're encouraged. Now you're motivated. Now you're empowered to actually resist the devil at all costs and he will flee from you. 
Understand that you are earnestly contending for the faith right now. When you are earnestly contending for the faith, you fight with everything that God gives you to resist the devil, his imps, and everything that he has put there. Listen, the seed that was planted there by the devil is not a holy seed. The holy seed of the Lord is the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes into your life, listen to his leading, listen to his guiding, listen to his prompting, because he will lead and guide you into all manner of truth. And the truth for this moment and the truth for this hour is Matthew 6 and 13. God deliver us from ourselves and from the devil. You're in charge.